Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. Now in the previous videos of diode, we understood that what is diode and we had also seen the VI characteristic of this diode. Now suppose if this diode is connected in particular circuit, then first of all we need to find that whether this diode is conducting or non-conducting and if it is conducting then what is the voltage and current in that particular circuit. So in this video, let us learn that how to solve the diode circuits and how to find the voltage and current in circuits which contain these diodes. Now there are two ways by which we can solve these diode circuits. The first is the graphical method in which using the load line we can find the voltage and current in the circuit. And the second method is the diode approximation. So first let us see how we can solve the circuit using the graphical method. Now like I said, in this graphical method, using the load line, we can find the voltage and current across the diode. But first of all, let us understand that what is load line. So here we have a very simple circuit in which some DC voltage is applied to the circuit and some current limiting resistor R is connected in series with this diode. Now here, let us assume that the applied voltage is sufficient that it will forward bias this diode. And let us assume that the voltage across this diode is equal to Vd and the current that is flowing through the circuit is equal to Id. So now if we apply the KVL then we can write this voltage V is equal to Vd plus Id times this resistor R. So if you see this equation we have uh, two variables the voltage across this diode Vd and the current that is flowing through this diode that is equal to Id. So from this expression we can find the line on this ID versus VD curve and we can get the different possible values of VD and ID. So for example, if we put VD is equal to 0, in that case we will get the extreme value of this ID that is equal to V divided by R. So we will get one point on this Y axis that is equal to V divided by R. And similarly, if we put ID is equal to 0, in that case, we will get one point on this horizontal axis and that will be equal to Vd is equal to V volt. So we will get one more point on this X axis. And by connecting these two points, we will get the load line for the given circuit. So this intersection point will gives us the operating voltage and current for the diode. So in this way, using this load line, we can find the operating voltage and current for the diode. Although this graphical method gives us very accurate values of voltage and current, it is very time consuming process. So there is another way by which we can not only quickly solve the circuits but we can even troubleshoot the circuits. And this method is the diode approximation method. Now in the introductory video of this diode, we had seen the VI characteristic of the ideal diode. So if the diode is forward biased, in that case it will simply act as a closed switch. On the other end, in case of reverse bias, it will act as a open switch. Then after we had seen the second approximation in which we had assumed that the diode will start conducting only when the applied voltage crosses some threshold voltage. And if the applied voltage is less than this threshold voltage, in that case, it will act as a open switch. Then after we had also seen the third approximation where we have also included some series resistance with this diode. Now in most of the circuits, the current limiting resistor which is connected in series with the diode used to be a much larger than the diode resistance. So in most of the cases, we can neglect this diode resistance. So in our analysis, we will use the second approximation where we will assume that whenever the diode is forward biased, then the voltage across the diode will be equal to 0 0.7 volt and whenever it is reversed biased, then simply it will act as a open switch. So using this approximation, let us solve some diode circuits and let us start with very basic example. So in this circuit, a 5 volt of voltage is connected to this diode and here we also have a 1 kilo ohm of current limiting resistor. So let us find out the voltage and current for the given circuit. Now first of all, we need to identify that whether this diode is conducting or non-conducting and that can be found by finding the Thevenin's equivalent voltage across this diode. Now here, if the applied voltage across this anode and cathode of the diode is more than 0.7 volt, in that case, we can say that the diode is conducting. And here, 
we are assuming that the diode that is connected is silicon diode. In case of a germanium diode, the threshold voltage is to be around 0.3 volt. So in case of the germanium diode, the diode will start conducting whenever the applied voltage across the diode is more than 0.3 volt. Now here as the diode is conducting, so let us represent it by its equivalent circuit. And here let us assume that the current that is flowing through the circuit is equal to ID. So this current ID will be equal to 5 volt minus 0.7 volt divided by 1 kilo ohm that is equal to 4.3 milliampere. So this is the current which will flow through this particular circuit and the voltage across the diode will be equal to 0.7 volt. Now in this circuit if we assume that the diode that is connected is silicon diode and the applied voltage is 0.5 volt in that case it will not cross the barrier of this silicon diode. So the circuit will act as a open circuit. And hence the current that is flowing through the circuit will be equal to zero. But instead of silicon diode, suppose we have a germanium diode, in that case this diode will conduct. So as you can see, in case of the germanium diode, this circuit will conduct, while in case of the silicon diode, this circuit will act as an open circuit. So while solving the circuits, we also need to see the type of diode which is connected in the circuit. All right. So now once again let us assume that the diode that is connected in the circuit is silicon diode but now the direction of the diode has been reversed. So in this case if you see, if you find the thevenin's equivalent voltage then now across this anode and cathode the voltage will be equal to minus 5 volt because now the anode is on the right hand side and the cathode is on the left hand side. So equivalent voltage across this diode will be equal to minus 5 volt and hence this diode is reversed bias. So there will not be any flow of current through this circuit and simply we can say that this diode current ID will be equal to zero. So as you can see using this diode approximation we can easily analyze and solve the circuit problems. Now using this approximation the values of the voltage and current that we have got are not accurate values but they are quite close to the actual values. So for analyzing or troubleshooting the circuits, we can use this diode approximation. All right, so now let us see few more examples based on these diode circuits. So in this example, the two silicon diodes are connected in series and we have been asked to find the voltage and current across each diode as well as we have been asked to find the output voltage across this one kilo ohm resistor. Now for a moment, let us assume that these two diodes are conducting and as they are silicon diodes, so in case of the forward bias, the voltage across each diode will be equal to 0.7 volt. So to turn on these two diodes, the voltage across the two terminals of this diode pair should be more than 1.4 volt. And here as the applied voltage is 5 volt, so these two diodes will turn on. So let us replace these two diodes by their equivalent circuit. And if you see the equivalent circuit, then it will look like this. Now here, let us assume that the current that is flowing through the circuit is equal to I. So the current I can be given as 5 minus 0.7 minus 0.7 and that is divided by 1 kilo ohm resistor. So the value of this current I will be equal to 3.6 milliampere. Now the output voltage V out will be the drop across this 1 kilo ohm resistor. So the output voltage V out will be equal to 3.6 milliampere multiplied by 1 kilo ohm resistor. So the output voltage V out across this 1 kilo ohm resistor will be equal to 3.6 volt. So in this way, in case of the series connection of the diode, the threshold voltage to turn on the diode will increase. So instead of the two silicon diodes, if we have a three silicon diodes which are connected in series, the threshold voltage to turn on this diode will increase to 2.1 volt. So similarly, try to find the current and output voltage in the given circuit. Now this circuit is similar to the previous circuit, but here one silicon diode is replaced by this germanium diode. So try to find the answer and do let me your answer in the comment section. All right, so now let's move to the next example. So in this example, we have been asked to find the value of this voltages V1, V2 and V out. Now if you see the circuit, 
the anode of this diode is connected to the 10 volt through this 4 kilo ohm resistor while the cathode is connected to minus 5 volt through this 3 kilo ohm resistor so intuitively you can say that this diode will turn on so here if we apply the kvl then we can write 10 minus v1 minus 0.7 volt that is the drop across this silicon diode minus v2 that is a drop across this 3 kilo ohm resistor minus minus 5 volt and that will be equal to 0. So if we simplify it then we will get 14.3 volt that is equal to V1 plus V2. Now here we have assumed that the current that is flowing through the circuit is equal to I. So this V1 will be equal to 4 kilo ohm times this current I and this V2 will be equal to 3 kilo ohm times this current I. So if we simplify it then we can say that this current I will be equal to 14.3 volt divided by 7 kilo ohm that is roughly equal to 2.04 milliampere. So this is the current which will flow through this circuit. So from this we can say that this voltage V1 will be equal to 4 kilo ohm multiplied by this current I that is equal to 8.16 volt and similarly V2 will be equal to 2.04 milliampere multiplied by 3 kilo ohm that is equal to 6.12 volt so these are the values of voltage V1 and V2 now here the output voltage V out will be equal to V2 minus 5 volt that is equal to 6.12 volt minus 5 volt and that is equal to 1.12 volt. So this is the actual value of the output voltage. Alright, so now let's move to the next example. Now here, these two diodes are connected in the parallel connection and we have been asked to find the value of the output voltage as well as the current I that is flowing in the given circuit. And we have been also asked to find the value of the diode currents ID1 and ID2. Now if you see the circuit here, the two terminals of these diodes are connected to the ground potential and the anode of these two diodes are connected to the 10 volt through this 1 kilo ohm resistor. It means that these two diodes will become forward biased. It means that the output voltage which we will get across these two diodes will be equal to 0.7 volt. It means at this node the voltage is equal to 0.7 volt. So from this we can easily find the current that is flowing in the circuit. So the current I will be equal to 10 volt minus 0.7 volt divided by 1 kilo ohm resistor and that is equal to 9.3 milliampere. So this is the total current which will flow in the given circuit. Now here we are assuming that these two diodes are identical. So this current I will get equally divided between the two diodes. It means that the current ID1 and ID2 will be equal to 4.65 milliampere. Now in this example, as the two diodes which are connected in parallel are identical, so it is easy to solve this particular problem. But if the two diodes which are connected in parallel are made up of different materials, then we need to see the threshold voltage of each diode. So based on this, we will see the next example. So in this example, the silicon and the germanium diodes are connected in the parallel connection. Now here for a moment let us assume that the two diodes are conducting simultaneously. And first of all let us assume that the silicon diode is conducting. So if the silicon diode is conducting then there will be a voltage drop of 0.7 across this diode. So at this node the voltage will be equal to 12 minus 0.7 that is equal to 11.3 volt. Similarly, let us assume that this germanium diode is also conducting. So if this diode is conducting, then the voltage drop across this diode should be equal to 0.3 volt. And the voltage drop across this silicon diode should be equal to 0.7 volt. Now as these diodes are connected in the parallel connection, the voltage drop in the parallel connection should remain constant. But here the one diode has a voltage drop of 0.7 volt while the other diode has a voltage drop of 0.3 volt. It means that only one diode should conduct 
and one diode should remain off. So let us find out which diode will conduct and which diode will remain off. Now in this circuit, whenever the 12 volt voltage is applied to these diodes, in reality, this voltage will take some time to reach from 0 to 12 volt. Now during the course of this transient, if you see, first of all this germanium diode will turned on. Once this diode is turned on, it will try to maintain the voltage across the two terminals. So because of that, this voltage across the silicon diode will also remain 0.3 volt. And hence, the silicon diode will not able to turn on. So if you see actually, the voltage across the two terminal will remain 0.3 volt. So the output voltage V out in reality will be equal to 12 volt minus 0.3 volt that is equal to 11.7 volt. So in this way, whenever the two different types of diodes are connected in parallel, then we need to see the threshold voltage or the cut-in voltage for each diode. So the diode which has a lower cut-in voltage will turn on first. Alright, so based on this, let us see last example. Now in this example also, we have been asked to find the output voltage. Now here to find the output voltage, let us assume that both diodes are conducting simultaneously. And first let us talk about the first diode. So if the first diode is conducting, then the voltage at this node should be equal to 2 volt minus 0.7 volt that is equal to 1.3 volt. Now the same voltage will also appear at the cathode of this second diode and the anode of the second diode is connected to the 4 volt. It means that the second diode will also become forward biased and if this diode is turned on then there will be a 0.7 volt of voltage drop across this diode. So if we consider this second diode as a conducting diode then the voltage at this node should be equal to 4 volt minus 0.7 volt that is equal to 3.3 volt. But here if both diodes are conducting simultaneously then you can see that there is a contradiction at this node. It means that both diodes cannot conduct simultaneously. Now suppose if we assume that the second diode is conducting only in that case the voltage at this node will be equal to 3.3 volt and at this node also the voltage should be equal to 3.3 volt. So if this is the case then the first diode will remain off and there will not be any contradiction of the voltage. So it means that the assumption that we have made is correct. That means the first diode will remain off and the second diode will remain on and the actual voltage at this node will be equal to 4 volt minus 0.7 volt that is equal to 3.3 volt. So this is the output voltage for the given circuit. So I hope in this video you understood how to solve the problems based on the diode and we will solve some more examples in the upcoming quiz. So you can check the community tab section of the channel for the more information. So if you have any question or suggestion do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.